Let's pray the Lord, brethren. We praise the Lord one more time and we give the Lord all the glory and all the honour. Hallelujah. Welcome this morning to Sunday School Lesson and we thank God for each and every one of you. Praise the Lord. Reading to Bishop Andrew Landell, Evangelist Carlton Landell. Reading to Minister Forbes, praise the Lord Jesus, Minister Campbell, all the brethren of Mount Horeb, Apostolic Church, to the brethren at Erlington Apostolic Church and all the offices there, and to the brethren at Hall Green Church, and to Elder Hepburn, and all the brethren, and all those who are watching also on social media, please, please accept greetings in the wonderful name of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. For the time that we have, we are going to go into the Sunday School lesson. We pray that each and every one that is listening, watching, will be blessed in Jesus' name. Praise God. Before we commence, praise God. Please bow your heads with me. Please have a prayer in your heart that God's word of teaching will go forth in Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, hallelujah, we magnify you and we adore you. And God, we thank you one more time for another opportunity Lord God, to sit humbly at your feet. Lord, prepare our minds, prepare our hearts. Prepare us right now, Father, as we are about to receive what you have to give. Let your word of teaching go through right now, Father, in Jesus' name. Help those who are listening, help those who are watching to grasp, hallelujah, to hold on to what you are delivering today. Lord, we thank you for your divine word. We bless each and every one, hallelujah, and we give you the glory and the praise in Jesus name. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord Jesus, hallelujah. Today it's April the 24th, 2022 and we're in series two still and the theme of that is God is with us. Lesson 2.3 and God knows the way. <clears throat> the lesson big idea today is I will remain faithful to God and trust him to order my steps. Hallelujah. I will remain faithful to God and trust him that he, that he will order my steps. Hallelujah. Sometimes we want to walk our own way. Sometimes we want to go in our own direction. Our own direction is not always the will of God. Our own direction is not always designed for us. But in today's lesson, praise God, hallelujah, we are going to remain faithful in which direction wherever God is sending us or taking us through. And we are going to trust him that he orders our steps. Our steps are anointed. Our steps, hallelujah, are anointed that we can go in the steps in the direction where he wants us to go. Praise the Lord. It is Psalms 37 verse 23 when the psalmist writes, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his ways. Praise God. So the focus verses that we're looking at today, in today's lesson, is Genesis chapter 41, verses 38. Praise the Lord Jesus to verse 40. Praise God. The lesson text in Genesis 41, verses 1 to 45. And we're going to be looking at Psalms chapter 1, verse 1. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 9. Praise the Lord. Okay, so the, the writer of the book that we are looking at today, the book of Genesis, is Moses. He is the writer of the first five books called the Pentateuch, or the Torah, the Law. Praise the Lord. This is the, the, the five-fold volume consisting of the first five books of the Old Testament. So this word does not occur in Scripture, nor is it certainly known when this role was rolled out and divided into five portions. And we have it as Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Shall we praise the Lord? The book of Genesis is the first book of the Bible. It gets its Hebrew word, Bereshith, from its opening word in the beginning. So Genesis means generation, it means beginning. It records the history of creation, the history of and the birth 
of man, the universe, and the history of the world also as well. Praise God. It records and gives details of God's gracious purpose of redemption also as well. <clears throat> so, the, so the writer is Moses. His Hebrew name is Moshesh which means to be drawn out of the water. It means saved from the water. And when we read about Moses, his life was divided into three periods of 40 years. And Moses was born at Goshen in Egypt in 1571 BC. Praise God, hallelujah. So in today's lesson, the, the main character today is Joseph. Praise the Lord. Joseph is the older of Jacob's two sons by Rachel. Having been long barren, she said at his birth, God had taken away my reproach. The Lord, I regard this son as an earnest that he will add to me another, a hope fulfilled afterward in the birth of Benjamin. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> so Moses. He is a writer of the book of Genesis. The main character today is Joseph. So Joseph is 17 years of old when he is sold into Egypt. Jacob was 108. Isaac living was 12 years afterwards. So Joseph is age 30 when he's made governor in Genesis chapter 30 verses 23, 24. And Genesis chapter 37 to chapter to, um, chapter 2, Genesis 41 46, and Genesis 41 39. Before Jacob came into Egypt, so born, praise the Lord Jesus, in 1906 BC. He's called the son of Jacob's old age as the comfort of his father in declining years when his elder brothers, by misconduct, grieved. Their father and Benjamin as yet was too young to minister to his, to his father Jacob. So Joseph means increase. The elder of the two sons of Jacob by Rachel, he was born in Bernadam in Mesopotamia, probably around about 1746 BC. Hallelujah. He's first mentioned when a youth of 17 years of age. When Joseph brought the evil reports of his brethren to his father, and they hated him because his father loved him more than he did them, and had shown his preference by making a dress or a coat, a tunic of many colours. Praise the Lord Jesus. In Genesis chapter 37, it records that Joseph dreamed a dream foreshadowing his future power which increased and this hatred um, came upon his brethren they hated him for this dream not just this dream for many other dreams in Genesis chapter 37 verses 5 to 7 Jacob his father sends him to visit his brothers who were tending flocks in the fields of Dothan they resolved to kill him but he was saved by the eldest brother Reuben, who persuaded the brothers to cast him into a dry pit to the intent that he might restore him, hallelujah, to Jacob. Later on came an Ishmaelite camel train of Midianites, and they sold him into slavery, praise the Lord, bought by a man, the captain of Pharaoh's house, Potiphar. Praise the Lord Jesus. And in this Potiphar could see, because of Joseph, that his house was prospering, his house was growing. Hallelujah. But in, but in this also, Potiphar's wife, praise the Lord, wanted to take Joseph. Hallelujah. Wanted to, to lie down with Joseph, and Joseph resisted. Praise the Lord Jesus. And as he made his escape, he left. His tunic, he left the very garment that he was wearing in a hand. And because of this now, Joseph was thrown into prison. 
praise the Lord, thrown into prison for something he didn't do, he was falsely accused. Where he remained there at least two years, interpreting during this time the dreams of the cupbearer and the baker. So, in Genesis 41, verse 39 to 40, Joseph was, was called before Pharaoh. Pharaoh had disturbing dreams. Now, have you ever had a dream that upsets you that much? How did the dream impact on you the next day? Was it a nightmare? Did you try to break out of your sleep and try to wake yourself up out of the dream? But it says that Pharaoh, he had these disturbing dreams. Praise the Lord. And he, he was unable to interpret these dreams. Praise the Lord. He, he brought the wise men, astrologers, praise the Lord, of Egypt, and they couldn't interpret the dream. Now, after two years, it says that the butler remembered Joseph. Pharaoh asked Joseph to interpret his dreams. Not here, Joseph could have bargained with Pharaoh. In other words, huh? now you want my help. Now you want me to interpret these dreams. And Joseph could have said, well, what is it in there for me? Hallelujah. He could have bargained maybe for his release. But in this, we see that Joseph showed humility in the prison when brought before Pharaoh. He didn't think of himself or his predicament, praise the Lord, but he humbled himself. And as children of God, we must humble ourselves in whatever situation we may find ourselves in. It was the Apostle Paul that wrote in the book of Philippians chapter 4, verse 11 to verse 13. He said, not that I speak in respect of want, for I've learned in whatsoever state I am therein, to be content. Praise the Lord. This learning of content didn't come over um, a day or a week or months. This learning of content came, hallelujah, through years, hallelujah, of going without, going without food, going without water. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus, hallelujah. Going without certain things when his life was in jeopardy, when his life was in danger. But it said that he learned to contend, he learned to live in the situation and make the best of the situation. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 12, Paul writes, I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things, I'm instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer in need. He knows what it's like to be hungry when his belly is naturally hungry in hallelujah Jesus. He knows what it's like to want food and there's no food there. He knows what it's like to have want to want water and there's no water there. He knows what it's like. And some of us, hallelujah, can understand what Paul is saying. But some of us who may have gone into the cupboard and there is no food in the cupboard. No water. Hallelujah. How am I going to feed myself and how am I going to feed the family? Praise God Jesus. <clears throat> In Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, Paul says, I can do all things through Christ Jesus, which strengthens me. So Paul has the remedy, which is Jesus. In whatever state of mind that he may find himself in, some of us may feel down in the dumps. Some of us may feel sorrowful. Some of us may feel that we can't do this and we can't complete this. But learn what, from this what the Apostle Paul says. It is not I. But it's a Christ in me that allows me to do this and to accomplish all things. Hallelujah. Paul writes also in Philippians chapter 2, verse 8. He says, And being found in the fashion as a man, as he's talking about Jesus now, he also humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even to the death of the cross. Praise the Lord Jesus. So in Genesis chapter 41, verses 1 down to, to verse 10. It records um, Joseph interpreting, praise the Lord, the dreams. 
And as I read, and it came to pass at the end of two full years, that Pharaoh dreamed, and behold, he stood by the river. And behold, there came up out of the river seven well-favoured king, and fat flesh, and they fed him in a, in a meadow. And behold, seven other king came up after them out of the river, ill-favoured and lean flesh, and stood by the other king upon the brink of the river. And the ill-favoured and lean flesh king did eat up the seven well-favoured and fat king. So Pharaoh awoke, and he slept and dreamed the second time. And behold, seven ears of corn came up upon one stalk, rank and good. And behold, seven thin ears blasted with the east wind sprung up after them. And the seven thin ears devoured the seven rank and full ears. And Pharaoh awoke, and behold, it was a dream. Hallelujah. In Genesis 41 and 8, And it came to pass in the morning that his spirit was troubled. And he sent and called for all the magicians of Egypt. And all the wise men, therefore, and Pharaoh told them his dream. But there was none that could interpret them unto Pharaoh. They spake, then spake the chief butler. To, unto Pharaoh, saying, I do remember my fault this day. Pharaoh was rough, mad with his servants, and put me inward in the captain of the guard house, both me and the chief baker. And we dream the dream in one night, and he will dream each man according to the interpretation of his dream. And there was there with us a young man, <clears throat> a Hebrew servant to the captain of the guard. And we told him and he interpreted to us our dreams. To each man, according to his dream, he did interpret. And it came to pass as he interpreted to us, so it was me he restored unto my office, and him he hanged. Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon. And he was shaved himself and changed his raiment and came into Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, I have dreamed a dream, and there is none that can interpret it. And I have heard say of thee that thou canst can understand a dream to interpret. Note here, the advice was good in the eyes of Pharaoh. Pharaoh understood that Joseph was not only had the right interpretation of the dream, but also the right advice. To respond to the message from heaven. And Pharaoh said to his servants, Can we find such a one as this man, in whom is the Spirit of God? Hallelujah. A man in whom is the Spirit of God. Pharaoh had plenty of priests, he had plenty of magicians, he had plenty of wise men and holy men. But what he did not have until Joseph was a man with the Spirit of God. This made Joseph stand out among the others. Praise God. So in Genesis chapter 41, verse 38, the theme is can we find such a one as this? This is the first mention in the Bible of the Holy Spirit coming or overshadowing a man. It is interesting to note that it was in regard to more practical things. Joseph didn't have to preach a sermon or lead a prayer meeting for Pharaoh to see that the Spirit of God is upon him. Praise the Lord Jesus, hallelujah. When the man or the woman is anointed, others will know. They will see, they will feel the manifestation of their neighbor. Can walk into a dead room and cause the atmosphere to change. And the atmosphere to be alive. Hallelujah. Pharaoh could see in it his character, in his message, in his knowledge, in his wisdom, and his humility. The presence and power of the Holy Spirit can be seen in very practical ways. In our character, how we carry ourselves, and in our humility. Joseph told Pharaoh the interpretation. And Pharaoh elevated 
Joseph is second in command in Egypt. The events of Joseph's life led him to a place of influence in the world. God ordered Joseph's steps, guided his steps from out of the pit to the palace. He says, I will refrain faithful to God and trust him to order my steps. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, in so much as God has shown you all this, there is no one as discerning and wise as you. You ever be over my house and all my people shall be ruled according to your word. Only in regard to the throne will I be greater than you. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, See, I have set you over all the land of Egypt. Insomuch as God has shown you all this, there is no one as deserving as wise as you. This was the first indication that Pharaoh wanted Joseph to be the one to save Egypt through wise planning and preparation. This maybe surprised Joseph also as well. Pharaoh said, you shall be over my house. Joseph had the knowledge and the wisdom, but Pharaoh had a choice. He chose to give Joseph authority over all. He didn't say, thanks for the advice. I will handle it from here. Pharaoh was wisely surrendered to Joseph's knowledge, Joseph's wisdom, and Joseph's authority. Joseph would be over Pharaoh's house and his personal business. Joseph would rule over the people of Egypt according to his word. Joseph would be second in the kingdom behind Pharaoh. Joseph would have authority over the land of Egypt. To note here, Joseph only seemed to be an overnight success. In truth, his journey from the pit to the palace took 13 long years. This part of Joseph's story reminds us of some important principles regarding promotion and advancement. Promotion and advancement is from the Lord. In Psalms 75, verses 67, we see this. This is not to say that hard work and preparation, good habits and other human aspects do not contribute to success. This clearly does also. Yet even those things that are gifts and abilities from God should be regarded with humility and gratitude towards him. It is God that giveth. Hallelujah. And it's God that can take it away. Promotion and advancement is never enough without the Lord. So many will say, hallelujah, through my hard work, I've got the promotion in the job. Through my hard work, I've got promotion here and I've got promotion there. But as children of God, we, we, have, we understand that promotion comes from the Lord. It is the Lord that has made the way possible. It is the Lord that has shown favour on manage, and the manager, hallelujah, to look upon you and to see something in you to elevate you. You can't be so promoted or advanced to where you stop needing Jesus. Jesus, hallelujah, is often the pro promotion mechanism and success comes from Jesus. He sees our needs just more and more. So Jesus sees your need in the job. He may see that you may need a wage advancement. He may see that, that you may need it to be lifted up from where the position that you are in your job. Praise God. Hallelujah. So I want us to note today that Daniel was another of God's people who had an excellent spirit. He was King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. Like Pharaoh, was troubled by a dream. God gave Daniel the, the correct interpretation. 
Daniel and his friends were promoted as wise advisors to Nebuchadnezzar. In Daniel chapter 2, verse 48 to 49, it says that the king made Daniel a great man and gave him many gifts and, and made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon and chief of the governors over all the wise men of Babylon. Note then Daniel requested of the king and he sent Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, his friends, over the affairs of the province of Hallelujah, above them. But Daniel sat in the gate of the king. Praise God. So Daniel and his friends were also promoted also. Hallelujah. By God, through God. Jesus received the ultimate promotion or advancement. Joseph passed from humble servant and prisoner to powerful ruler because the prophecy of Jesus himself. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 to 11, describes the ultimate promotion. Paul writes, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it on robbery to be equal with God, but made himself no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, that word humble again, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also highly exalted him, and gave him a name which is above every name, that the name of Jesus, that every knee should bow of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Praise the name of the Lord. So not here. The way of the righteous and the ungodly are found in Psalms chapter 1. In Psalms chapter 1 verse 1. He said, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Verse 6 presents the key to understanding Psalms chapter 1. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the godly shall perish. In this psalm, the way of the righteous and the way of the godly are contrasted. Psalms chapter 1 verse 1 <clears throat> What the righteous man does not do. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Blessed is the man, hallelujah, the Hebrew word esher is here translated blessed which has the idea of happiness or contentment. Esher is a form of the Hebrew word asher, which is a root meaning to be straight or to be right. So blessed is a man speaks of, of the happiness, the blessedness, the contentment in life of a man or woman who is right or straight with God. The righteous man will be a blessed man and a happy man. Blessed means su supremely happy or fulfilled. In fact, in Hebrew, the word is actually a plural, which denotes either a multiple of blessings, hallelujah, or, is, or a mass of them also as well. Note here, it is... <clears throat> Excuse me. It is not blessed is the king. Blessed is the scholar. Blessed is the rich. But blessed is the man. This blessedness is a, attainable by the poor. Attainable by the forgotten. And the obscure. As by those whose names figure in history and are trumpeted by fame. Walk not 
nor stand, nor sit. The blessed man does not do certain things. He knows how to behave himself. There is a way he will not walk a path. He will not stand in. And a seat he will not sit in. No, the righteous man and the ungodly man are different in how they think, in how they behave, and in whom they belong. Not others have also seen in this a progression of sin. The great lesson to be learned from the whole is sin is progressive. One evil propensity or act leads to another. He who acts by bad counsel may soon do evil deeds. And he who abandons himself to evil doings may end his life in total apostasy. Hallelujah from God. But not here. He walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. The ungodly have a counsel. And the righteous man will not walk in it. With all the advice that comes to us from so many different sources, the righteous man knows how to stay away from the counsel of the ungodly. No, the righteous man knows how to discern the counsel of the ungodly. Many fail at this point. They do not even consider the counsel is godly or ungodly. They hear advice or theories about their problems and they find themselves agreeing or disagreeing without considering is this godly or is this un ungodly counsel. Note here the righteous man is also discerning enough to know the counsel of the ungodly can come from one's own self our own conscience, our own mind, our own heart can give us ungodly counsel. Hallelujah. So the ungodly in 1 Kings chapter 12 verse 6, and it reads, And the king Rehoboam consulted with the old men that stood before Solomon his father, while he yet lived and says, How do we advise that I may answer this people? And they spake unto him, saying, If thou wilt be a servant unto this people this day, and will serve them and answer them, and speak good words to them, then they will be thy servants forever. But he took the counsel of the, the old men, the wise men, which they had given him, and consulted with the young men that were grown up with him, Hallelujah. Men that lacked maturity, men that lacked understanding, men that lacked knowledge, and which he stood before him. And he said unto them, What counsel give ye that ye, we may answer these people who have spoken to me, saying, Make the yoke which thy father did put on us lighter. And the young men that were grown up with him spake unto him, saying, Thus shall they speak unto this people that spake unto thee, saying, Thy father made our yoke heavy, but make thou it lighter for us. Thus shalt thou say unto them, My little finger shall be thicker than my father's loins. And now whereas my father did lay you with a heavy yoke, I will add to your yoke. My father chasing you with whips, but I will chasing you with scorpions. So Jeroboam and all the people came to Rehoboam the third day. At the king and appointed saying, come to me again the third day. And the king answered the people roughly. And forsook, forsook the old counsel, the old men's counsel that they gave him. Ignored the counsel of the, of the, the wise mature men. And he spake to them after the counsel of the young men, saying, My father made yoke heavy, and I will add to your yoke. My father also chastised you with whips, 
But I will chastise you with scorpions. Hallelujah. So he takes the, the wrong counsel here. Hallelujah. Counsel of young men that had no understanding, no humility. Hallelujah. Not mature or understanding. Praise the Lord. The righteous man knows where to find complete godly counsel. In Psalms chapter 1, it says, Your testimonies also are my delight and my counsel and my counselors. In Psalms 119, verse 24, God's word is always the best counselor, and godly counselors will always bring the truth of God's word to help someone who wants counseling. It is the prophet Isaiah that writes Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. He says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. The Messiah is our counselor. Jesus is the one fit to guide our lives, give good good direction should the, the Christian immediate resource as a counsellor you find that resource in Jesus Jesus can help you with your problems, he can help you with your issues, with your situation there is a song that we can find comfort in, in the, the Pentecostal song hymn book number 280 and the theme is I must tell Jesus he says, I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, and I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. In the song, Jesus becomes our help, he becomes our strength, he becomes our hope, and he becomes our counsellor. Hallelujah. The psalmist goes, to, goes on to say, nor stands in the path of sinners. Sinners have a path where they stand, and the righteous man knows he does not belong on that path. Path speaks of a way, a road, a direction, and the righteous man is not travelling in the same direction as sinners. The righteous man is not afraid to take a detour, unless Hallelujah, stressful travelled road. Because he knows it leads to blessing, happiness, and eternal life if he takes the other road. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 13, the, the evangelist writes, Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in it by that way. The righteous man can have confidence in Psalms 16, verse 11. You will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. God has a path, a direction that he wants his children to follow. And it is good. It is the right road to take. The psalmist goes on to say, No, he sits in the seat of the scornful. The scornful love to sit and criticize the people of God and the things of God. The righteous man not sit in such a seat. Hallelujah. And in, and in Proverbs chapter 16, verse 9, he says, A man's heart devises his ways, but the Lord directs us his steps. So the theme is God knows. The way, hallelujah. In John chapter 10, verse 9, Jesus said, I am the door, and by me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in out and find pasture. I am the door of the sheep. Jesus used another picture from sheep farming in his time. Out in the pasture lands for sheep, Pens were made with only one entrance. The door of those sheep pens was the shepherd himself. He became the door to open and to close. 
He laid his body across the entrance to keep the sheep in and to keep out the wolves. The shepherd was in fact the door that led, hallelujah, to eternal life. Praise God. In closing, in Job chapter 23, verse 10, Job writes, But he knoweth the way that I take. When he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. Got to be tried, got to be put through the furnace of affliction. Job said, My foot have held his steps, in other words, his oil in my steps. His ways have I kept and not declined, I've not resisted his way. Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. Shall we bless the name of the Lord? We give God thanks for the words of the Sunday school lesson. Hallelujah. He knoweth my way. Hallelujah. Jesus. God knows the way. God knows what he's doing in your life. He has given direction and a road for us to follow. Help us to stay on that path, on that right road. Hallelujah. Joseph could have come off that road, but Joseph st stayed, hallelujah, in the path that God put him up until the time when God was to lead him off out of the road, uh, until the time when God was to elevate him. And some of us, hallelujah, are getting near to promotion day. We're getting near to be lifted out of the trial, lifted out of the problem, the issue that we was in. Hallelujah. The issue, the problem becomes our prison. Praise God. But God, hallelujah, one day will lead you out of your prison. Bless God. Next week's Sunday school lesson, it will be May the 1st, 2000. 22. See you as to God is with us. Hallelujah. Lesson 2.4. And the theme is beauty from the broken. And the lesson big idea I will surrender my past to God. I will surrender my past to God and allow Him to make something beautiful out of my brokenness. Praise God. And the focus verse to Genesis 45, 7 to 8, Genesis chapter 50, verses 20 to 7, Genesis 45, verses 1 to 28, Genesis 46, 26 to 34, Genesis 47, 27 to 31, and Genesis 50 and 15 to 21. And the truth about God. God knows how to take what is meant for evil and make something good out of it. Praise God. God bless you today. I pray that you've enjoyed the Sunday school lesson. I pray that God's word, hallelujah, made an impact upon each and every one of us to know that God is leading the way. All we've got to do is stay in the way of God. Hallelujah. God bless you. Hallelujah. May the Lord be richly with you and keep you. All in Jesus' name.